and this is Lit Happens, your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Maria Lise St. George. Now, she's an artist, an award-winning writer, a poet, and an author. Her latest book is called An Assortment. Maria Lise, welcome to the show. Thank you. So, let's go back and tell me about, tell me about this, this journey that you've taken, beginning as an artist and, and mm -hmm. moving into being a writer. Well, uh, I just um, always drew, <laughs> you know, and painted. And, and when I was a child, um, um, and we, don't, we didn't have the really good children's books at that time. There was an awful terrible one called Elsie Dinsmore or something. And, um, but then as, even as a young age, I hated the illustrations. If there were, there were any, they were awful. And then later on, you know, teenage and so on, they were just, you know, didn't, that's not that, that heroine didn't look like that. Uh, so I would draw my own on the blank pages. I would always do new covers and things. Uh, but I didn't really get into working with writers until I came to Saskatchewan in the uh, 70s. And um, then got to meet all, you know, Patrick Lane, Lois Simi, you know, so many of the really good, uh, Bonnie Bernard. And uh, so they wanted to use my work, thank goodness, <laughs> on their books. So there was sort of a rapport there. And um, I just got into writing. I just got seriously infected <laughs> to become a writer. So uh, from then on. Well, and when you when you have those people like Patrick Lane who yeah. who encourages you and, and yes uh, yes he was great help yes and uh, he also wanted uh, one of my paintings and uh, so um, it was it was a mutually uh, uh, I I shouldn't get off so t with anecdotes but uh, his wife bought. The painting that's on the cover of the book for him secretly, so he had to pass <laughs> sort of little envelopes with <laughs> with money for the book, but he was very pleased. So we have two books with us today. We have Once in a Blue Moon, which is a story of your life. Yes, it's a memoir, um, and uh, it was uh, it was great fun to write, and people have liked it. Um, so. Um, it's, uh, and it was very beautifully done by Cato. I was very lucky to have a excellent designer. So um, and, I, I'm very pleased about that. And it's your artwork on the cover as well. Oh yes, on the cover and in the book, uh, everywhere. <laughs> it's all my, all my own stuff. <laughs> well, and that's really wonderful because we, we often as adults don't get to have books with pictures in and yeah. that's one of the lovely things about your books is yeah. there are the words but we also get the visuals we get to well, have a little bit more of a clue about what's going on in your head because we get to see your drawings as well well yes there um some of them some people find them a bit much uh, they're perhaps a little uh, uh over the top but um you know that was just something that uh, i painted very seriously, you know, with a shoestring gallery and other, um, one in Regina, um, Susan Whitney. Uh, and uh, I just wrote as well, but not a lot. So it wasn't until uh, until after my husband died that I really started writing in earnest, because of course with arthritis I can't, couldn't paint anymore. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it was just a logical, uh, uh, but I didn't set out to be a writer. Um, I just wrote stories that hit me, or or evolved. Um, and your your previous uh, guest was talking about, um, or one of your guests earlier, uh, talking about the therapy of writing. And I found that when my husband was ill that I couldn't, there was no time to write, this was a 24-hour uh, job, uh, that just going to the, uh, to the keyboard and writing, bang, 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 
everything that happened or was upsetting you or whatever. That's very good. She's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was excellent. But then I, I, you know, then I got writing story, real stories and so on. Um, and a, a strange mixed bag. I mean, this book <laughs> is uh, I self-published because it would be just so difficult for a publisher to to put it in a in a uh, what's the word. Uh, not keyhole, but um, in a container. pigeonhole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's what happens. You get older, you get your words all mixed up. Um, but uh, so I, I did that. And I've, I was doing cartoons as well, and I was doing poetry, as well as writing these short stories. And um, so I just got them all together and did the book. Well, and, and what a lovely title, an assortment, and we and it, it really makes us think of that box of chocolates. And sometimes you want a cherry, and sometimes you want a nut, yeah, and sometimes yeah. you want a poem, and sometimes you want a short story or a cartoon. Yeah, that's it, because some are, I mean, some are very serious. There are two uh, echoing back to World War II. There are really funny poems, serious poems, a poem about my, my twin brother who uh, died at birth. Um, uh, and uh, others, you know, about cats, and and then there are um, ones about a an elderly man in a nursing home who got really fed up and uh, had an adventure with a sort of wonderful shark, a uh, uh, amazing, uh, mysterious, and totally fantastic shark, and so you know. Or a, a little girl who is all by herself, and uh, and she um, discovers that she can make things appear, uh, and a dog appears, a guardian dog, who looks like the Lone Ranger, and uh, he's a, a very nice, but he isn't always all that good at what he does. <laughs> so. Well, we're almost out of time, but I'd really like it if you'd read us a, a little short piece. Oh, okay. Um, I, everybody's read... Uh, I have a little section in here about the movies and the really best-known books. And um, one here is about a cat. Or, or sorry, uh, my favorite pig... We lived on a farm in Niagara on the lake for some time, and is that always the way I can't get that open? Mm -hmm. Can you open that last page? Sure. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth Bennett, of course, from... from um, uh, and... Uh, eating Elizabeth Bennett. A shock to see Elizabeth's head poking over the stockpot rim. Long white eyelashes, beaded with steam... Glazed eyes popped out by, he, by the heat. Tender pink snout quivering as, as it would at feeding time when I'd pry myself from my book and hot Mr. Darcy under the cool willow tree. Approach her sty with pails of turnip parings, milk and windfall apples. What joyous satisfaction to feed a happy trencher. Intelligent eyes shining, she'd stretch her dainty trotters to the topmost rail squeal and grunt with bliss as I scratched her stubby skull with a rough, round twig. The summer day I sneaked my sister's lipstick called Startling Red. I saw that color in Elizabeth Bennet's blood as it spurted from her throat into the butcher's tub, a shock. But I'm a big girl now, mustn't let it show, ignore the aroma as her every part is cooked, just refuse the savory Sunday roast, pellucid head cheese, and sausage called bloody or, or blood pudding. But a girl gets hungry dreaming of all that Austin on a crisp autumn day. I seal into the ice house, pry the lid from a pottery crock, dig through the soft white lard, eat her sweet grilled chops. Hmm. Thank you. <laughs>
I, all my stuff isn't that uh, bloodthirsty, but some of this. But you've just proven that this book really has something for everyone, and, and you've got your, with just like a box of chocolates, you'd savor it over time and take a little bit here and there. I hope so. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you so much, Marie Lise, for coming on the show. Well, you're very welcome. I'm Danica Lohr, and this has been Lit Happens. Thank you for watching. You can find past episodes by going to Lit Happens, or for looking for Lit Happens on Shaw TV Saskatoon's YouTube channel. You can find me on Facebook or Twitter, or you can email me at danicalore at gmail.com. <laughs>